Hi everyone, we are Group Blue Ocean. Today we are going to talk about Television Broadcast Limited. We will walk through the background and bring out the reason of strategic issue by different analysis. And finally, some recommendation will be provided. It is a Hong Kong listed company with three major activities, which is the traditional free-to-air broadcasting and those digital platform. Also promote the television advertisement for marketing. Next part is the overall picture of what analysis. We should give a brief idea about the factor that affect the company internally and externally. For strength, it is an experienced, well-known company which is established in 1967. They also have the equipment for their own valuation, which is able to create the vertical integration for the production to the marketing and sales. Moreover, it is TV bully, which means the government released the license from them and cause monopolistic market domains. The entry barrier is high, just like the failure of HKTV. There are four main weaknesses. First is a high operation cost and low visibility of it. As bearing the responsibility of license, they can't access the market freely, although they are facing net loss as well in the any report. Second is the low creativity of drama, and third is the low loyalty of actors as they are low pay or lack of job assigned. Lastly is the poor user experience of Big Big Shop. As shown in the comments from App Store, it has poor delivery team, customer service, and unstable ad, which will affect the competitiveness. There are a lot of opportunity once TVB make good use of it. The well development of infrastructure, globalization, and monopoly could increase the coverage of e-commerce purchase. Before talking about the threat, let me ask you guys a question. How many of you enjoy watching TV on television without the internet? I believe that the answer is obvious. The keen competition and low switching costs for customer cause the core rigidity and hyper competition as it is part of the strength are outdated and not sustainable. Also, demographically, the elderly population still prefer to stop shop physically. The political factor encourage people to boycott TVB. Next, Jenny will talk about the strategic issue of TVB. Thank you, Kate. Before I introduce TV, TVB competitive advantage, I think you need to understand a concept called inertial view or inertial loyalty, which describes viewer behavior of selecting TV channel are determined not by quality, but by inertia. Since TVB is the first and only one free TV program in Hong Kong for around six years, which kind of already nurtures people habits of selecting its channel since it's free. Right now, even though there are other free TV programs, they still will go for TVB when they turn on, when they turn on the television due to this concept. The first play advantage kind of gives TVB a uh, competitive a competitive advantage to indirectly monopolize the market for a very few decades. However, it seems that this advantage no longer exists because for the past few years, TVB has a drop in its performance. As we can see, uh, its advertisement revenue decreased from 3.4 to 2.4 billion and even plunged by 69% during the pandemic period. And TVB has already generated net losses of around 200 million in 2018 and 300 million in 2019. This lead is stock price decrease from 80 to 8. All these numbers are related to its decrease in view. This is the strategic issue we identify. In order to gain better insight of the factor that lead to the decreasing view, we have made a short interview. <laughs> So the above are the reason uh, given by the interviewee why they stop watching the TVB. So are they the main um issue? main factor that lead to the strategic issue, well, some of them are, some of them are not. After we have done more research, we have found that the main factor that lead to the strategic issue are the above. First, let me talk about the factor one first. Factor one is that the competitive environment has changed. First, we will analyze the competitiveness in the TV broadcasting industry before 2000. In fact, at that time, the competitiveness in TV industry was quite low since it had high requirement for capital license and production costs. Therefore, it caused a huge barrier for new entrants. Also, since there are only two free TV programs, TVB and Asia TV, so the intensity of rivalry are, uh, was low. 
Besides, at this time, television was deemed as the most effective way for advertisement as it contains both verbal and visual elements. So other traditional media like newspaper and radio are hard to 100% replace it. So the threat of substitute was low because of that this lead to low bargaining power of buyer as they do not have many options for advertisement. Uh, after 2000s, although the threats of new entrants are still high, the intensity of rivalry has increased after the government has granted two more licenses to Fantastic TV and View TV. Also, the threats of substitute rise significantly due to the emergence of new media, for example, social media, game, and streaming media are becoming more and more popular. These media offer different advertisement plans uh, with different prices, which are more flexible and effective for advertisers compared with traditional TV broadcasting. This further leads to high bargaining power of buyer. As we can see, the competitiveness in the TV industry has changed. Nevertheless, TVB overfocus is a competitive advantage in the past, which is no longer sustainable. Since people seldom watch television right now, TVB necklace the change of the industry. Although in 2016, it realized such problem and launched my TV super, my TV super to respond to the market change is still too late for them to outstand the market due to highly powerful com competitor, which will be expensed by my group Janus. Competitive advantages cannot be sustained. To bring this theory down to the case, due to recent technological development and occurrence of new media such as Netflix and YouTube, TVB no longer holds competitive advantage of being Hong Kong's biggest and most mature television broadcast company. I will further elaborate it using the case of Netflix. For Netflix AWS, it allows seamless access to the massive subscription content. After paying the subscription fee, which is around 63 to 93 HKD per month, audience can access Netflix using any devices. For example, in daytime, you may want to watch Netflix on mobile app on the way you go to work. At nighttime, you may watch Netflix on computer or even television at home. In contrast, if audience want to enjoy the subscription content of My TV Super on television, they need to install the hardware shown in the slide, which is all, which is called the My TV box. In the field of audience or household, the installation of My TV box may not be very convenient for them. In this 21st century, when everyone are pursuing more portable, more convenient technological devices, it is very obvious that My TV Box and My TV Super Services is not very popular among households in Hong Kong. Also, My TV Super requires separate subscription for the different devices. Let's illustrate this by using the same scenario mentioned before. If you want to watch My TV Super on mobile phone during daytime and watch it on television during nighttime after you get back home from work, you need to pay two subscription fee, which is 98 per month for mobile phone and 148 per month for My TV Super box connected to the TV. In order to show a bigger picture, let's also compare the subscription fee of My TV Super with its local competitor, View TV. From this slide, we can see that the View TV membership subscription fee is only around 21 Hong Kong dollars to 28 Hong Kong dollars per month, which is much lower than that of TVBs. Finally, it comes to the recommendation. In order to improve TVB sustainability, TVB should start investing in technology development of its company to develop a more advanced technological system. And for long term, TVB should attract more customers by lowering the subscription fee of my TV super. So this is the end of my presentation. I will now pass the time to Eric. One of the factors which result TVB of a first revenue and fears is a bad impression. By using the passive framework, we figure out the social cultural factor is essential. Hong Kong people is affected by wrestling culture and education. They emphasize some universe value, including the freedom of press, the legality of reporting, and human rights. However, from a communication authority and report, TVB received over 20,000 complaints against it in last year, and most of it are regarding the biased reporting. As a public press, TVB holds responsibility on several things, including being credible, 
reporting the bad and she have no self-censorship. However, many suspect events occurred which indicate that TVB did not perform on this way. Meantime, we conduct a stakeholder primacy analyze on the bad impression issue. We find that TVB concerned the authority most, second is the shareholders, but they don't really care about the bearers and employees. For example, there was a news that TVB suspended a political show, Headliner, which produced by RTHK, which exactly the time the Chinese President Xi Jinping visited Hong Kong, which is a suspect self-censorship. Meantime, in 2019, TVB management allowing its employees for expressing their political stance, we may believe is a means of silencing its employees. For the recommendation, we propose a call petition. We should start from the news reporting department and for the advantage of TVB, it can build up the confidence from the audience. And the second advantages of its cooperators is reduce the operating costs and they may gain the population of viewers from TVB. In 2015, TVB did something like that and it invited renowned YouTubers to appear in its shows. But who is our cooperator? We should choose the most credible media, so it would be now TV. After the recommendation, we believe the stakeholder primacy would change and it becomes balanced than before. I will pass the time to my group mate Ivy for the second for the next battle. Thank you, Eric. I'm going to talk about the third factor, low quality of TV drama. One of the core competencies of TVB is that they produce TV dramas with cultural values which resonate with Hong Kong citizens. However, it cannot sustain the core competency and turn it into core rigidity. TVB over dependent broadcasting segment to generate profit. They did not realize audiences are shifting to other platforms due to low switching costs. TVB dramas would have lower viewership as a result. Based on its interim report, the income from advertisers under broadcasting segment decreased by 69%. Due to lower viewership, the advertisers recognize that it is not beneficial to place advertisement in TVB. In the long term, plummeting advertising profit will affect the economic sustainability of business. There are a few factors leading to low quality of drama. First, there is shortage of artists. They found that it is more lucrative to move into films or working in mainland. As shown in previous work analysis, low loyalty of artists is one of the weaknesses of TVB. Also, TVB used recycle sets, crops, and costumes to reduce production costs. Most of the scenes are filmed at TV City Studios. There is a few location filming, so viewers get tired of watching the same scenes over and over again. Writers use formula dialogues, for example, Are You Hungry? Let's Cook Instant Noodles. Due to cost control measures, a few artists dominate the shows in prime time slot, so reappearance of artists happens frequently. It is confusing when watching dramas with reappear artists in one night. As you can see, the rating of sitcom even higher than that of anniversary celebration shows, Todd Hing Kang. Although both of them are co-produced with mainland, but the ratings are not as high as the management expected. Ironically, situational comedy with low production costs defeats anniversary celebration show. As for recommendation, TVB should produce more self-produced drama which create cultural value to Hong Kong viewers. Under the effects of learning curve, TVB already equipped with basic equipment and human resources to produce drama. It requires less capital investment to produce better shows. They can conduct market research to better understand the consumer trend. TVB can also learn from previous successful examples such as Who Wants a Baby, which has high ratings and become word of mouth among audiences. The drama reflects the problems of tiger parenting, which arouse an echo in audience heart. People will notice the effort done by TVB and regain loyalty. Therefore, improvement of viewership will regain trust from advertisers. They are willing to place advertisement and enhance the economic sustainability of TVB. On TVB cases, we have learned that we always need to actively monitor the market no matter we are at the top or not. TVB used to be the lead, used to be the leader in the TV industry. It then get lazy after that it missed the best time and opportunity of catching up the future trend. Now it's facing a risk of being eliminated eliminated from the market like Asia TV. Uh, from the perspective of self-growth, we have learned that the respect is really important, although we do not agree with each other working style, but 
conflict cannot solve anything as long as we are responsible and hardworking, everything can be solved. So that's the end of presentation. Thank you.